Hi, Adam from Evo here, and today I'm going to help you get started using PreSonus Studio One with your Evo interface. First things first, let's get the Evo interface set up before we start the door at all. So the first things first, I'm going to get in this case an Evo 8, but this also works with an Evo 4 and Evo 16. And I'm going to plug this into my computer, whether that's a Mac or a PC. With most modern Macs, you'll be using a USB-C to C cable. With a lot of Windows PCs, a C to A cable will work perfectly well. It may not be able to handle enough power, phantom power on every input on the Evo 8. That depends on the USB ports of the computer and that's something you should check with your manufacturer. If you're using an Evo 16, make sure you plug that into your AC power before plugging in the USB connection to your Mac or your PC. Now let's look at drivers. Whether you're on a Mac or a PC, you will need to get the latest Evo drivers for your machine. That way, your DAW, in this case Studio One, can talk to the Evo interface in the best possible way with all the latest updates and the most efficient communication. In that case, we're going to evo.audio in your browser, and we're going to go to the product that you're using, which is in products, and on the left here, one of the audio interfaces. In my case, the Evo 8. As we go down the page, we will see the word downloads appear at the top, and we can give that a quick click, and that will give us a choice of the Mac driver or the Windows driver here. Download the version that's right for you, get that running and walk through the steps that the installer gives you and I'll see you back here very shortly. Now with the drivers installed, it's time to run the Evo Mixer app. A lot of the time when you start your PC or Mac, the Evo Mixer will already be running, waiting for you to plug in your interface. But you may find that the first time, this needs to be opened and awoken to begin its audio journey. In that case, we go to our applications on Mac or the start menu on Windows and we find the Evo app. In this case, I double click it and it's coming up with the Arc Creative Hub. Uh, you can join this if you want to get lots of free software and special offers from us at Evo in conjunction with other manufacturers. I'm already a member, so I'm going to click already a member and close this window down. On a Mac, you should be able to find the Evo mixer on the top right with the big E icon. The same logo is in Windows in the taskbar at the bottom right. There is a little arrow at the bottom there that you can click, which will bring up any icons that are not currently shown. The one that looks like this E here, that's the Evo mixer. I can click that and then click show mixer. Alternatively, when I plug in the interface, quite often the Evo mixer will appear on its own. From here on the Evo 8, I can see my four microphone inputs and the outputs from the Mac 1 and 2, 3 and 4 and loop back there. With an Evo 16, we see even more. And with an Evo 4, we see the control app. From here, I want to plug in my microphone. I want to plug this in to input 1 on the Evo 8 and then plug in my microphone as needed. Now a microphone like this, this is a studio condenser microphone. This will need 48 volt phantom power. So in the Evo series, we click on the number for the microphone input we want to use, in this case, number one. Then I can hit the 48 volt button and that will now provide power to this microphone. Now given a few seconds for the microphone to settle, we can then click on our microphone input one more time and we can adjust the gain because by default the gain will be at zero and we will more than likely need to add some additional gain to bring the microphone level up to where we need it. Two options. First option is just use the knob on the front of the interface to change the gain. Second option, smart gain. So with smart gain, we click the green button for smart gain, then the channel which we're using in this case, number one, and then click smart gain one more time and begin making noise. When you've made enough noise, usually with a, a vocal performance or an instrument performance or a drum performance, whatever it may be, the smart gain icon will blink green and then the level should be set ready for you to use in Studio One. Okay, now that we have a microphone plugged into our interface, our interface plugged into our computer and the Evo mixer ready to go, it's time to open up Studio One. 
Okay, so the Studio One program has launched and we can see in the middle at the bottom here is Setup. And currently it's not working with the Evo 8 because it's set by default to MacBook Pro speakers. So we're going to click that and open that up. And that's going to give us a few options here. On Windows, you would have to choose the ACO device type. Uh, but then beyond that, the playback device I'm going to choose is Evo 8. And that changes the recording device to also be Evo 8. And so we are up and going. Beyond that, we need to look at the default block size because block size is to do with latency and buffers. This is related to how quickly the audio can get from this microphone or any other source through the interface, through Studio One and its processing, then back to the interface and then through monitor speakers or headphones. We tend to find that lower block sizes have less latency, so less delay in processing, but at the same time, this runs the risk of having clicks and pops and dropouts, otherwise known as buffer underruns. What's happening is if the computer can't keep up with everything we're asking it to do, then it has to give a little bit of silence instead of the audio it's supposed to give, which if that's short enough, sounds like a pop or a click. If we're getting into very complicated project territory, we may find that we need additional buffer here with a larger block size, something like say 1024 samples for an extremely busy mix. Or we might find that if we're recording and we need that lower latency, something like 128 samples might be necessary, but we do run the risk there with the buffer underruns. Make sure you're choosing something here that's right for you. Personally, I tend to use 256 samples most of the time, but if you're latency sensitive, or if you've got a very heavy mix going, you may need to adjust this. I'm going to hit OK and make myself a new project. So I'm going to click New, and then we get lots of options here, but the one I'm going to pick is Record and Mix. Name this appropriately, and then choose a sample rate. So in sample rate, 44.1 kilohertz is the traditional CD standard. And then 48 kilohertz is what we tend to use on film, DVD and Blu-ray production, YouTube, anything that might go with a video, like say a music video. There are higher sample rates available and the Evo series is capable of using them. If you know you need to use those, then by all means go ahead, but I'm going to stick with 48 kilohertz here and hit OK. That now gives me a new project. In here, I'm going to right click in this section and add a mono track. Now that's giving me one mono track here and if I hit the red record button, that's automatically lit up the blue button for monitoring. So I should now be able to hear this sound through headphones or monitors. That's going through Studio One. Now this is chosen by default input left, which is defined in Studio One. I'm going to change the setup here in Audio IO Setup by clicking where it says Input L and then going down to Audio IO Setup. Here I can now see all four of my microphone inputs on the Evo 8, or on the Evo 16 even more. By default, we only have input left and right available. I'm going to change the names on these by double clicking them and change them to Input 1 and Input 2 simply because I'm then going to add mono tracks with the add mono button. So I now have input three and four that have appeared and the M for mono on this grid here is connecting input three and input four to PreSonus One's inputs in the software. Now I can hit okay and that's now changed name from input L to input one where we changed that name. If I click that again, I now have four options and I can choose any one of those. With an Evo 16, you can make as many either mono or stereo inputs as you wish. Stereo would be for things like stereo effects or stereo keyboards and synths. From here, I can then hit the record button at the bottom and that is now recording for me so the audio should be coming through. 
And if I hit stop, we can now see that recorded some audio in. And if I was to move the timeline up the top and hit space, we would hear that back. Now, if we wanted to record this with effects, let's say compression, EQ, all those kinds of things, then we would click the effects on the right hand side and we could then drop onto this track any type of effects we like, like male vocal louder might be a good one. That will have things like compressors on there, ready to go. So that's all ready for me to record with and I will be able to hear that through the headphones or the monitor speakers. Do be careful of feedback. Now, if this sounds great, but there is too much of that delay or latency, what we can do is use the Evo mixers near zero latency mode. So we're going to turn off monitoring here in Studio One by clicking that blue icon. And that's now not monitoring. That will still record in Studio One, but that won't come out of the headphones and speakers until after recording. If we go into the Evo mixer, we can see the levels going up and down for this microphone in real time. And I can turn up this fader here and that will now go straight from the microphone straight through the Evo 8 and out to the monitors or speakers without going over the USB-C cable and without going through Studio One. Almost no delay, really good for tracking if you need that immediacy, but you won't be able to hear any of that effect processing. You should still be able to hear your backing tracks, anything you've recorded in Studio One, but you won't be able to hear any effects on this microphone in real time. At this point, you may come across an issue that I call ghosting, where you have kind of a, a strange doubled style of vocal, where it might sound like a kind of chorus effect or slightly hollow and very strange. Usually if that happens, what's going on is that this near zero latency monitoring is activated at the same time that Studio One is monitoring its own version of the audio. So what we need to do is decide which one of these two we want to keep and which one we need to turn off. In this case, I'm going to turn down the fader in the Evo mixer and only have the monitoring in PreSonus Studio One. You can go with one option or the other, but with both, that's how we end up with that strange effect. I hope this has been enough for you to get started recording in Studio One. There's plenty of Studio One tutorials out there, but hopefully this has got you working with your Evo interface. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the Evo interfaces, check out some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. And if you need any help, do contact our support team. Thanks for watching, good luck, and I'll see you out there. Goodbye.